Um, our company slogan is work hard, stay passionate, as a lot of people know. Being in business for 26 years, there's obviously been long seasons where I have not been passionate. The flow of business and life has worn me down, like to the core, like to where I want to quit. It's those seasons you just keep working hard. So when you don't have the passion, you just keep working hard and it'll come back. That's what makes the difference. When the passion's gone because of the tough seasons, you don't stop because you don't feel it. You stay committed. You keep working hard on all the right things and the passion will come back. So it's, it's that old quote, if you've lost your passion, do what you used to do. <laughs> so whatever you've gotten away from, go back and do that thing, you know, get your heart beating again, so to speak. And a lot of times you'll see that just like a ship has a rudder, it, it turns your rudder of your business and you'll start going back in the right direction. So that's, I want to leave everybody with that. Work hard, stay passionate. If you've lost your passion, get back to work. Hey, what is going on? My name is Dustin. I'm the host of the Detail Spot podcast. This episode is one that I've truly been looking forward to for a long time. And we have on Jeremy Stevens, the owner of Shine Supply. This is a guy who is a veteran, a goat within the industry, someone who is truly inspiring, someone who has inspired me and motivated me since the beginning stages of my business. And he's probably inspired a lot of you guys as well. And uh, just this is an episode that I've looked forward to for a long time. I kind of set it as a goal to myself that once we got the channel to a certain point, I wanted to ask Jeremy to be on. And uh, thanks to you guys, we've got it there. We got it to that point. I asked him, super cool dude. We vibed out in this episode and um, I hope you enjoy it. I won't really don't really need to introduce this guy anymore just because you probably already know who it is. But if you do enjoy the episode, uh, this episode, or you are enjoying the content that is coming from this podcast or this channel, if you can leave us a review on either Apple podcasts or Spotify, it's going to greatly help the channel grow so that we can reach other detailers and so that they can get something from it as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. We have on Jeremy Stevens uh, with Shine Supply. Not that everyone doesn't already know who you are, uh, but we have Jeremy Stevens on. Uh, Jeremy, tell us a little bit about you, um, kind of introduce us to how you kind of got into detailing all those years ago. Was it Stevens Detailing back then? Yeah, thanks for having me, Dustin. Um, yeah, it was Stevens Detailing, 1996. Gosh, man, that's awesome, dude. Um, so tell us like what it was that kind of like, what got you into it? I know like a lot of us detailers, we start like washing our own car, washing our friends and family's cars, but like what got you into the, like this industry all those years ago? Um, Really when I was younger, the line of work my dad was in, uh, his boss was on the board of directors for McGuire's. Oh, heck yeah. So he was in charge of maintenance for this guy's fleet. He had like one of those nice, fancy Prevo buses, kind of what you see movie stars or like rock stars in, not movie stars, but musicians. Mm -hmm. So this guy had one of those and my dad took care of it. And so there was McGuire's products all, all around the shop. So after school, I'd go down there and just clean stuff. And really, that was probably one of the main connection points that I had with my dad. Uh, we had a rough relationship and, you know, he battled alcoholism. So when I look back, that was my main point or my main area where I connected with him. You know, I'd go down there and, you know, he'd give me stuff to, to clean. And it was just like a bonding time. And it's crazy how when I was 18, I was coming out of a, you know, a rough season of life felt pretty lost, man. And I just went back and landed on what make me happy with my dad. Oh, heck yeah, dude. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. Like, it's crazy how we go back to things that 
bring us comfort, you know, especially with our father. Even if there's a lot of bad memories, like you just grab a hold of the one thing that reminds you of him and you just go back to that. So <laughs> that was it, man. At 18, I I just went back to that and I started Stevens detailing. Um, not not as a hobby, not on the side, like full time. Mm-hmm. You just you just dove straight into it. Dove straight in, like went to a sign shop, got some magnets made, polished up my truck, had a little Dodge Dakota single cab, threw some magnets on the side, and utilized my phone number because think about a '96, you know, cell phones were <laughs> they look like a brick, <laughs> right? Yeah. And there was no internet, so it was yellow pages and. I use my home phone number by the magnets and walking into salons, walking into office buildings. I'd sit outside a Target on a Saturday, people walking in, hey, can I wash your car while you're inside shopping? Just <laughs> lots of rejection, but lots of wins too. Dude, $10, that's... bro, inside and out, vacuum, For real? windows. Yes, dude, dress the tires. 10 bucks and probably about a year into it i bumped it to 12 dollars and 15 for suvs <laughs> dude that, and that's like you know now we hear like oh you're charging 50 100 you're way too low like that's that's the norm now you know it's like you know now people can charge 200 300 500 thousand dollars for detailing so it's kind of wild that's to wild. see like you know it's wild to see someone when detailing wasn't as um as sexy i guess you could say like detailing was wasn't as cool as it is now well not not even that it just wasn't the trade wasn't recognized dustin for sure yeah so it's like you know like people i mean i was one of the first five guys to ever start a mobile detailing business in mentor county mm -hmm. so i mean people were like oh you're like washing cars out of your truck <laughs> you know remember back to the future biff mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only reference they had like yeah. publicly to this trade they're like oh that's cool you're like you have like all your stuff with you and you can like come to my house it was not a recognized trade at all and how like how hard was it to like educate clients back then like now at least you have like social media and they can kind of see snippets of like what we do and like how hard was it back then before all of that to kind of like educate them on hey you know this is something that you may want or need. Um, how was it? How hard was it back then? It was extremely hard because paint correction wasn't even a word. Think about it. When, if anyone, when anyone thought of polishing, like the general public, they were thinking a buffer, like a body shop, which mm -hmm. they all had horror stories. So everyone was against buffing. So everything back then was like, you're going to wax it by hand, right? You're going to polish it by hand, right? And Dustin, I was like, yes. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't use a tool for my first five years. Everything was by hand. So, because, and that's what people wanted. And the only value that I could pitch to them was that I will hand wax your car, hand wax it, hand polish, no machines. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't, you couldn't pitch like, oh, I'm going to do a safe wash, you know, wash the bottom with a separate mitt. I'm not going to put swirls in your car. Like none of us really even, we didn't pay attention to swirls like we do now, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that wasn't, that wasn't a pitch we could give customers to like, Hey, this is why you should use me. And this is why you should pay me this amount. Mm-hmm. So the only, uh, I'd say the angle that I really had was the convenience. Hey, I'll come to you. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, you could, the convenience. But no joke, man. I remember going to $12 and some people gave me a hard time. Wow, that's nuts, man. Like, was that, was that a competitive, like, I know you, you said you were like one of, the first in Ventura, but like, was it like, was it competitive to other people? Was that kind of the price point back then? 
No, dude, there wasn't, there was no, there was me and like two other guys and then mm. a handful of guys uh, with no business name, you know, just with some stuff in the back of their truck, mm -hmm. right? Just, you know, shoving cash in their pocket. So, you know, there's only me and two others that were legitimately like a real business name, business license, like really doing it. Mm -hmm. But I could do, I could do a 10, $12 wash, <clears throat> you know, in about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So and, and prices, you like got to think about it though, Dustin, minimum wage back then was, I think, 750 or something mm. like that, or even yeah. lower. So I looked at it as like, man, you know, like with my expenses, I mean, my, my truck was paid for. It was like a little $6,000 Dodge Dakota that I bought mm -hmm. with another job, you know, that I was working prior. So I didn't really have any overhead. So I was like, man, after my cost, you know, I'm probably making nine bucks an hour. This is rad. Mm -hmm. True, true. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, the dollar you know? has changed too. So like, that's a, you know, people hear 10 to $12, like that's still probably low, but it's like back then we're, we're looking at what 20 something years ago it's like you know dollar amounts have changed since then so it's like still low but not you know ungodly in the amount they have changed paying. yeah they have changed and another thing that's changed is i didn't have the pressure on me of, of comparison there was no social media obviously so i didn't i wasn't constantly gauging myself against a hundred several hundred other people every day because of what i was seeing on a phone mm -hmm. i was so proud that i was just doing something significant with my life finally and then i was showing up for myself and showing up for customers and making people happy and doing something i truly enjoyed dude that's all that mattered mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it was simple dustin Dude, that's such a good point, man. Like, and, and I, like, I'm guilty of it too. Like, I think everybody is guilty to some degree. Some can do it better, I guess, with more time in, but like as social media has came up, like you see, and I'm the type of person too, that's impatient. Like you see something that, especially in the beginning stages, you start with what you have, like your budget in the beginning is it may be low. I know mine was, and it's like, then you see all these other details. It's like, Oh, that's shop, man. I would love to have it at shop. I want, I want it sooner than later when, you know, it takes time to get to that point. Like we don't see the stages that they went through. You know, we, we just see what they have now. And it does get kind of like, it's almost now that social media is a thing. It can be kind of depressing because we want, 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 and we compare ourselves. Like you said, we constantly look at, Hey, this, this guy in two States over has this already, man. And he's only been in business for one or two years, but like, why can't I have that? And, you know, and, and I'm guilty of it. And I'm sure a lot of people are, um, but like, what advice do you have for that? And how, like, have you ever experienced that as social media has came up? I have, you know, I, I've been tempted with it, Dustin. I mean, I, I have not, it doesn't get a grip on me and I, and I, and I'm grateful for that. And I think it's just because of how I established my company. I developed character outside of or character focus, whatever you want to, however you want to refer to. I developed that outside of social media. Um, but I, it's human nature, man. It wants to suck you in envy and jealousy knocks at your door every morning. Right. And I think what happens is guys nowadays, they really struggle with losing sight of the journey, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Kobe Bryant said that, right. He said, it's not about the destination. He said, it's about the journey. It was one of the best quotes I've ever heard because it is the fulfillment is in the journey. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're not appreciating the journey and reflecting and going, man, look where I was last year and now I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's so much more important than going, look where that guy's at. And I'm only here. You mm -hmm. have to keep your eyes on yourself. And when you do look at other people, you have to be disciplined to use that as inspiration and don't let that jealousy in. Cause as soon as the envy and the jealousy gets in, it distorts the purpose of seeing somebody that's farther along than you. We all need to see somebody that's farther along because it, it pushes us, right? Mm -hmm. It, it motivates us. It pushes us. But if I let that 
discourage me for where I'm at, that's pulling energy that I need for my journey, mm -hmm. for my vision, for my company. And then you know what it does? It distorts our motivation. You'll sit back and wonder, God, man, am I, am I even doing this for myself anymore? Or am I doing this for other people's expectation on me or other people's perception on an app on my phone? <laughs> it's not even, mm -hmm. it's not even real when it really comes down to it. It's a great tool, but it's not, it's not real life. As you know, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Yeah, dude, that's, you hit the nail on the head with that. Like that's, and I think I actually, um, I talked to somebody, I had a, somebody on a podcast and they actually told me that you, they were dealing with that same issue and that you were, you told them you were like, just block them, unfollow that person. That's like, if you, and it was something not, it was something different about, like, I think it was an, a, a local competitor to them and they were kind of getting eat up by, it, and you were like, dude, just block them. Like it'll, you know, you don't want to, but you do, you know, you're like, if you block them, you won't see their stuff. And if it's wasting energy on, you know, the time that you should be put, putting on your business to grow for you and your family, then block them, man. You know, it's not doing anything for you. But that was words from you, actually. Someone can't remember who it was that I had on, but it was literally from your mouth is what they were saying. Well, and, that, and that's so important to know who to ignore and who do we listen to, right, Dustin? Mm -hmm. That's where social media has distorted is that we have these followers, mm -hmm. <laughs> The, you know, these friends and it's like, okay, they're not friends and they're not really following me. now mm -hmm. probably 20% are, mm -hmm. but if, if I have somebody that is going to come at me with any kind of correction, like a stern correction or confronting me on something, I have to check the source. Mm -hmm. And if this is somebody that's not involved in my everyday life, that doesn't really know me, I'm not giving any credit to what they say. Mm -hmm. and, and we're giving too much credit to the wrong people. Now, arrogance is when you move into like, man, I don't listen to anybody. I'm blazing my trail. I don't care what you think. You know, I don't care what people. Come on. We all care what people think. We just need to, we need to pay attention. And uh, are we caring what the right people think? And the right people are, it definitely should be your wife, should be your kids. It should be your close friends and it's probably less than five, right? Mm -hmm. Like a tight circle of people that can speak into your life. And, and you make yourself, you make yourself vulnerable to these people and you allow them to speak in your life. And when you have that at your core, you don't really need the validation of social media. You're not, if somebody tries to argue with you, it's like, look, I'm not even, <laughs> no. <laughs> like I'm not even giving any thought to that. It's tempting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause we all want to defend ourselves, but it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not going there because as soon as I open that door, so to speak, you know, what comes in Dustin, mm -hmm. you, you're just going to train wreck your day, maybe even your week. Mm -hmm. And then you go, and then you're going to potentially take it out on the people that you really do care about. Mm -hmm. Cause you got this internal thing going on now that can't be satisfied. Cause you can't argue with somebody on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. and what's right? crazy you both cra crazy. the crazy thing about what you're saying is the people who would actually the people who we listen to that we let in that we do allow and it does ruin your day i've let it you know you got one person out of 20 that would say something that is you know negative or um you know just something that you really don't want to hear maybe puts down what you've worked so hard for like in this case i guess it would be like someone's detailing business or you know maybe whatever business they're in or whatever they're growing or whatever they're putting their time into but like the one person out of the 20 that would comment or that would say something negative that you know we allow in is literally the one person that would never buy from you the one person that would never have anything they're not even really listening to what you have to say with an open mind. So it's literally that one person we allow in and it's human nature, like you were saying, but we allow that one person that would never provide us any value inside. And then, you know, completely waste our energy to where we could be spending time, either marketing, promoting, or putting something valuable out to the people who would potentially listen, you know, hundred percent, you know, and it's not saying that you you don't confront anything, but you, you confront things that really need confronting. Let me give you a quick example. Yesterday, 
we put out a reel on Monday, some stuff in our down phone, just a vibey, cool, fun reel. Mm -hmm. Somebody hops on and says, yeah, my two gallons leaked, blah, blah, blah. Like just complaining. So we don't have that happen that often. So when it happens, it's kind of like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, um, we got two different ways we can respond to that. Right. That's since like, we could just delete his comment and be like, this guy's an idiot. You know, it's, it's like totally inappropriate to leave that kind of comment on a reel. He should have emailed us, whatever. We don't need that guy. And I was like, no, <laughs> you know what we're going to do? I'm going to leave him a combat comment back and just speak directly to his comment. Like, Hey man, you know, next time, just contact us directly because we always want to make sure you're taken care of. I would mm -hmm. never want you to lose product because your gallon leaked and we don't know about it because we'll always make it right. Mm -hmm. So next time, just contact us directly so you can actually get your need met. Right? Because anytime people are complaining, it's like typically, you know, they just they have a need, but they just don't know how to communicate properly. Right. So usually people are going to blast you with it, mm -hmm. you know, in a customer service aspect. Right. Mm -hmm. So. I went even farther. I sent the guy a DM personally and said, Hey, you know, I'm responding again to your comment. I want to be proactive. I want to get this product replaced that you lost. Dude, his response, he's blown away. He's like, I have never experienced customer service like this in my whole life. Mm -hmm. So my 21 year old son who typically runs all the Instagram now, mm -hmm. he sees that I was on our account and I responded to him. He comes to my office. He's like, dad, that was so good. <laughs> so check it out, Dustin. I'm not only impacting that customer, which guess what? He's probably going to talk about Friday night with his boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, Dude, shine supply. They're going to like take care of me. Right. So I just won him over probably a couple more people. I influenced my son that works for me. Mm hmm. Right. Instead of letting my ego get out in front and be like, bro, I don't need you. We run a seven figure business. Your comment is deleted. Like go buy some products from company X. Like. And that's a place I know we're going on this, this side trail, but it's I think that's the edge people lose, especially when you've been in business a long time. You stop valuing every single customer. I don't mm -hmm. care if you're doing a maintenance wash or a full correction, or if somebody's buying a bottle of detail spray from us, or they put in a $1,500 order on the website. Like as soon as you lose the value of one customer, it's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that's one of your, the questions that you asked me when you sent me, you know, mm -hmm. the question sheet a few days ago is just, you know, what, what advice would I give? Mm -hmm. young detailers starting out and it's value every single customer mm -hmm. like bend over backwards for people that's the cheat code for sure it is like, right? that's that's the one thing man and that's like you have because like there are so many detailers now like you were one of <laughs> two one of three companies back then like now with social media and how easy it is like how mainstream detailing is and how you know anybody can start it doesn't cost a lot like what is something that your company can do to stand out and that one thing is because <clears throat> anybody can detail really anybody can clean a vehicle like you can learn it it's very <clears throat> easy to to comprehend, but it's that one thing that that's missing. It's that cheat code. It's how can you interact? How can you communicate? And how can you make that client when they leave, like you said, go to their friends and say, man, this dude was freaking awesome. Like, you know, we had a good conversation. We had, he went above and beyond. He remembered my dog's name or that's, those things are the things that have, you know, helped my business personally. And anybody that I've talked to that's, you know, had success it's that one thing it's how can you communicate and how can you provide value that way you know yeah one of the one of the main advices i'd give anyone that's listening that is maybe at the newer stage of detailing is that people customers know the difference between when you're trying to take their money or you're trying to earn their business mm -hmm. you need to keep that in the forefront of your mind 
daily? Am I trying to earn this person's business or take their money? And they could be a customer that you've had for six months or a year or even longer. If you're not constantly uh, choosing the mindset of like, I want to continually earn their business. I'm not entitled for this person to come back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like no one cares that it's Jeremy at Stevens detailing yet. Yes, we have a great reputation. Yes, we do quality work, but I could mess that all up in one day. And you know very well, Dustin, there's this entitlement mindset that is plaguing guys and they literally think they're special. Mm -hmm. And and I I intentionally keep in the forefront of my mind that, man, there's a youngster that could pop up any day and take this business from me, not this business, in but like this customer, mm -hmm. because I've lost my edge and they're going to bring it. Mm -hmm. Right. I've started just taking people's money rather than. I want to earn your business. I've done your car 10 times, but I'm going to earn your business again today with everything from how when I first get your keys till how the car looks at the end, I'm going to earn your business. Mm -hmm. You know, and the second thing is, is there's a real lack of commitment. I see with a lot of guys, there's a lack of commitment. They're trying this out rather than doing it. Mm -hmm. And, and, you can't lie to yourself, you know? So if you're, if you got one foot in and, and you're just trying it out and you're not making company shirts and labeling up your truck and taking it serious and having the presentation and being disciplined with your calendar. And when you tell people you're going to be there at eight, you're there at eight. And if it's going to be eight 15, you call them and tell them it's going to be eight 15. You're, you're running a tight ship. You know, you're almost treating it like you work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like you could get fired. <laughs> So lack of commitment. They're not committed. I tell guys that come to training, look, man, there's no, it's no secret to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I was like the difference between me and a handful of other guys that get into this business is that I'll keep doing the work. I'll show up every day, even when I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest issues I see right now with and before I say this, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of these detailers coming into the game, man, and they are crushing it. Their vans are dialed in. I love it. I'm so proud of so many of these guys. I mean, they are creative. Their setups are incredible. Their uniforms are tight. They're busting out some YouTube videos. I think it's amazing. But there's also a handful that are getting into it because they see you can make six, six figures being 18, 19 years old. And I think they're the, the money aspect is out in front and they're not factoring in all the other things that could really keep them in business long-term, which is the commitment. Mm -hmm. So example, that would be you have some maintenance clients Wednesday comes around. You're supposed to show up to your weekly maintenance client or your other, other week or your other, other week client you have an opportunity to go bust out some paint correction. So you cancel on that Wednesday client and you do that a couple of times in a row. Guess what? You just lost a customer that you might get four or $500 from a month. And not only that, but this has been a person that has referred you to several other people that you've made thousands of dollars off of. So what these guys start doing is they just tarnish their reputation and you can never get that back, Dustin. Mm-hmm. I think when we when we started this podcast before we actually started it, <clears throat> I asked like when you got into it and like, you know, I can't remember if it was before or after we, you know, press play and started it, but you said I just dove right in. Like it was it was the the one thing like I didn't start it part time. I didn't, you know, I I put magnets on my truck and like it was a truck I owned. It was the very beginning. I mean, it was like you said I owned the truck outright. It was, you know, nothing crazy, nothing as nice as your van you have now, but it's like you just started, you went full time in it. You didn't have a plan B. You didn't have one foot at the door. You were, you probably had the mindset of saying, this is going to work. I'm going to make it work. It has to work. You know, that's, I, and I, I would agree with that. I think a lot of the detailers that are asking for help and saying, Hey, you know, what is it that I'm doing wrong? <clears throat> and I think a lot of the times it's because you're thinking about what if it doesn't work, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm going to go 
get a job here, but it, this may work. I'm just not 100% sure. So it's, it's almost like the energy we were talking about. It's like their energy is just half of it's there, but it takes a hundred percent to get clients. It takes a hundred percent to, you know, produce good work. So I, I think that's spot on. And I think the reason people like referring back to how you, um, you know, the customer value that you provide, I think there's a difference when it comes to, cause there's a bunch of product companies out there as well, when it comes to chemicals and supplies. But I think when it comes to like shine supply, you know, I'll go into Walmart sometimes and I'll see somebody with a shine supply shirt on. I'm like, dude, I, I you know, that's crazy. I, I use them too. And I know the guy, you know, it's That's like, cool. or I know of them, you know, it's just super cool because people buy chemicals and they work that polish they use may be their go-to, but you don't see just like them rocking that company. And I think the reason people rock shine supply isn't fully because the products are great, but I think it's because you provide that personal feel. So the fact that you brought the same skills that you had in detailing from Steven's detailing, you brought that same customer feel to a, a Comp like a company like Sean Supply, it just it makes people detailers like us. It makes us feel like, you know, eat from a consumer standpoint because you know detailers we're we're talking to consumers, but us as detailers we're consumers when it comes to products. It's like, dude, this dude actually cares about us. Like, you know, so I I applaud you the way that you run Sean Supply. Like, even you know when we order supplies, there's an email. It's like, hey from Jeremy. It's like, Hey, if you need anything, did I mess anything up? Is everything good with your order? That's a one man. And like, I've saw that from the beginning, you know, from when I started using you guys. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you really care for people, it goes a long ways. Now it's gotten me in trouble because I've cared too long for the wrong people at times in this company. Uh, but I've never regretted how much I care because when you truly care, what I'm scared of the most is not caring. Mm -hmm. Like when people lose that ability to care, that's a dangerous place because you can't fake it. Mm -hmm. And when you stop caring about what you're doing and your customers, that is a dangerous place. But if anyone's in that place, I would tell them, Hey man, do you even care about yourself? Mm -hmm. Cause that's the starting point. So if you're neglecting yourself, you're not going to value other people, you know, and a lot of the pride, the healthy pride and the self-respect that we have for ourselves, man, that just like bleeds out onto everybody you get around or everybody you interact with. You don't, you're not trying. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about, you know, around here, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything. This is who I am. It's easy, Dustin, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And then just to touch back on the detailing with Steven's detailing, I was always proactive rather than reactive. Mm -hmm. So like when guys are like, man, what am I doing wrong? You know, I'm struggling. It's like, it doesn't mean I, I, I definitely went through seasons where I struggled, but I, I was always proactive. So rainy day, proactive, still got dressed, went to a coffee shop, worked on my business. It's a work day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Oh, it's raining. I can't do cars, but it's a work day. Go to a coffee shop, sit, work on my business, wear my uniform, have my shirt on. Oh, look at that. I got a customer just sitting in the coffee shop. Yeah. I'll do your car as soon as the rain clears up. Mm -hmm. Proactive. Just, you got to be proactive. You got to always be working on your business. How can I, uh, you know what? Let me update my business cards or let me update my website or let me look into how my pricing, how, how's my timing on my job? Am I spending too much time for what I'm charging? I mean, always being proactive, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of that's not happening right now is because a lot of dudes are distracted. They're too busy watching what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's how they get re reactive. They're just reacting. Oh, look at that guy. Look at this guy. Look at that guy's doing. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do today to make your business better, to make yourself better? You know, majority of my success, Dustin, is because I constantly work on myself, constantly. You know, I, I'd be a train wreck if I didn't intentionally work on myself. You know, I wasn't born into like just all scored away and super disciplined and like, Mm -hmm. Mr. Nice guy. It's like, no, that's not who I was, you know? 
I got to work at this, you know? And I, I think a lot of guys out there can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And you can't shy away from when you see things you got to work on, you got to lean into it. You got to be proactive. You know, great businesses are built because of great people. <laughs> For sure. Right. Yeah. It's, you're not, you're not just talking to the, whoever's listening to this, you're talking to me too. Cause you know, there's days where like, you know, I've yesterday was one of my days. I think like we all, we all have days to some extent, some people are, that are more disciplined, some people that are more, um, like you said, that work on themselves a little bit more, but like yesterday was one of those days where it was just off for me, you know? And it's like, it comes down to, especially like as entrepreneurs or as small business owners, we create everything we have to create or we either create or have to get someone to create. It's not like when we work for somebody else, we, they do that for us and that's easier, but it comes at the cost of, you can't make as much or you can't have as much freedom, but you know, we have to create everything. And like, if you're not in that creative mood or if you're not in, I guess if you're personally not feeling it, your business is not going to feel it. So a hundred percent, I agree. Like if you're not, if you're not working on yourself, going to the gym or doing something that you enjoy or, you know, getting yourself, even meditating, you know, if that's, if mm -hmm. that works for you, but like that is 100% true. Cause, and obviously I will still have days, but ever since I did, like I will go to the gym or I'll take a break and go play basketball or something just to get my mind right so that I can come back. And it's all energy. Like we were talking about, you know, yeah. put another three hours into working on my website or whatever the case is, but it all comes down to you because you are the creator of it. You are the sole owner of it most of the time. And if you're not feeling right, your, your business isn't feeling right. hundred percent. That's super important. It is. You know, it's man. interesting when I was, when I was, you know, I was mobile for 18 years mm -hmm. and I was so, dude, I loved mobile. I, it, it fit my personality. I like different scenery every day. I don't like doing the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. I, um, it was so fitting for just how I'm wired. I loved it, man. I was so happy, so fulfilled you know, super tired. Cause I mean, I work like a dog, but like the, my, my fulfillment like was my fuel, mm -hmm. right. It could just press me through anything. And, you know, I also have four kids. So I was providing for them. My wife was able to stay home. I mean, I just had so much healthy pride, mm -hmm. like, man, I'm taking care of my family. I'm really doing this. And that was my fuel. And honestly, Dustin, I didn't want a big business. You know, maybe this will speak to anyone listening that if you if your business is starting to grow, that's when you need to lean in more than ever to taking to self care. I mean, I I know that word's kind of you know like a, a buzzword right now, but mm -hmm. it's so it's so important because I look at when Shine Supply started to grow, and I had to start to be a businessman, not just a technician, not just a worker. Mm -hmm. I had to start to think like an owner that had several employees. And, and that's when I lost myself for a season because I, I wasn't in business, Dustin, to make a lot of money. I was in business because detailing made me happy. I was passionate about it. I wanted to care for people. I wanted to do something significant with my life and I wanted to take care of my family and I wanted to be an inspiration for my boys. Mm -hmm. Like, and I firmly believe that because that was my driving force, I was like, dude, I know I'm going to make it mm. like, I don't like the dollar amount <laughs> was all over the place during that journey. But I, I was like, I know I'm going to make it because I believe that people are attracted to people that run their businesses like that. So I knew the right people were always going to support me. Mm -hmm. I had a dude cut me a check for a thousand dollars once when my wife, my wife got hospitalized for 14 days. And I had to shut my business down. This is back when I was mobile. One of my clients cut me a check, Dustin, for a thousand dollars. And I, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I'll like I didn't even know what to say, but I was like, look, I'll work that as soon as I get back to work, I'll work it all off." And he's like, and his name was Jeff. He's like, "This was a gift." Mm. 
you know, so I hope that resonates in people that are listening. It's like, man, when you, when you put that work into yourself, it, it's, it did, it's almost impossible to fail because the right people are always going to see you. Mm -hmm. So whether you're at the bottom of the bottom, the right people are going to come and, and support you, say the right things to you, right? Give you what you need. And then when you're at the top of the mountain, you're not going to be there alone. You're going to have the right people that you brought with you. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's in this last season of shine supply. If people were like, Oh, what's your focus, man? What's your next move? I'm like, level up as a person, mm -hmm. <laughs> level up. I'm taking my team through this book right now. Developing the leader within you 2.0 by John Maxwell. Okay. Heck yeah. I'm taking all my management, my, my lead, my downfilling lead, my downfilling department lead, my shipping lead, my front store lead, my warehouse guy, my operations manager, my son, Colby, that's our sales manager and my media manager. I'm taking them all through that book because it's like, that's how this company is going to go to the next level mm -hmm. as people go to the next level. And Dustin, that is the hard road, man. You know why? Because if you're the owner and you're initiating that, you got to go first, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> you got to go first. So, but that's one of my favorite quotes to tell myself, Jeremy, go first. Mm -hmm. Go first in your marriage. Go first with your kids. Go first with your friends. Go first with your team. Be the one like, hey, man, I'll go. Yeah. I'll go. Because there's such a temptation to like, I don't know, you know, I'm going to wait to see what that guy does or. I'm going to wait to, you know, I'm going to wait to see the attention my wife gives me. No, I'm going to go first. Yeah. I'm going to go first. I'm going to initiate it. And trust me, I've sucked at that, <laughs> you know, but it's why I know that's a weakness. So I've gotten way more intentional about it. And I'll tell you, man, we are, it is, it, it's manifesting. Mm hmm you know, in our company, in my personal life. So anyone that's listening, you want to take your business to the next level, take yourself to the next level. Watch what you're eating. Are you going to the gym? Are you being disciplined? Are you reading? How much screen time do you have during the week? Are you smoking weed a bunch? Are you drinking too much? Are you partying on Sunday? So you're coming into Monday, just dragging yourself through the day. Like that's where it starts. That's where it starts. And you can watch all the motivational, you can watch David Goggin run down the street till you're blue in the face, you know, but you got to take steps for yourself. And sometimes Dustin, we're watching too much mm -hmm. and the information is making us feel like we're productive. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's almost like we look <laughs> at it like, oh, I'm the person to look at that. So I'm, or I'm, I'm that person now. Just I'm that guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm that guy because I watch it. I talk like it. I dress like it. It's like, no, man, you're not. Mm -hmm. You're not that person. And that's not a knock. It's like you, you, you have to put action to that. Mm -hmm. You know, but what happens is guys take step forwards in those areas. And guess what? They realize it's scary and it's painful. They back mm -hmm. off. Yeah. You know, it's freaking hard, Dustin. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And they look at guys that have done something significant, whether it's with their family or with their business or with their, their personal body. And they're like, dude, what, what, what'd you do? It's like, I wrote stuff down on paper, an action plan. I set goals and I held myself accountable. Pretty mm -hmm. simple, but it's not simple. <laughs> it's simple in that aspect, but it's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life, but it's the most rewarding. Dude, 100%, man. Like all, the fact that you're vulnerable enough to speak, like, you know, you were talking about, um, you know, going first and like how you used to suck at that or, or how, and I think we all have like anything, any of the greats in the world have event, have sucked at it at one point and realized that they sucked at it and are vulnerable enough to say, I'm, I was bad at that. I want to change that. Like the fact that you were vulnerable enough to share those things. Like th that's why I have so much respect for you. Um, but like you were saying about how, you know, once we do start, like we see these videos, we see this motivation, we see 
and I'll even refer to it as detailing, but I think this is in life in general, but like, and you are, you're one of those guys for me, you know, like the, the, the facts that you speak on social media and like, you know, following you along the years, it's like, you know, seeing that that was my inspiration, but it is harder to kind of start it. It's harder to, you know, say, okay, yeah, it's cool to watch it, but it cannot really do it. You know, and it is hard when you first start. And I think like you could refer to like people who start, start like YouTube channels or start like, you know, something that they want to be. I think we all get scared of like looking at what our friends from our hometown are going to think, or we get scared about like what, um, someone is, is going to think of us like internally, they may not even say it. They may not even come out and comment mm. it, but we're always thinking about what other people think. And it's like, mm. you know, um, and you almost look at it as like, you almost have to have the vision of saying five years, I may get laughed at, you know, say it's with your detailing business five years. I may be looked at as someone that just washes cars for a living or, you know, 10 years, maybe even, you know, you get looked at as someone who just has a below average job but in 10 years or five years or even two years, sometimes you could look at it and be like, now I got to where my vision was now, you know, those, those haters or whoever you think subconsciously is looking at you negatively, they can't really laugh anymore. You've got to where your dream is. And that doesn't really even have to be money. That could be just making enough to, you know, provide for your family or just even being able to make enough to where you don't have to work for somebody else, you know? So it's almost like your vision almost has to outweigh the self-consciousness that we all have in us, you know? Yeah. What I would say to that, especially being somebody that I don't, I don't like to be on camera mm -hmm. and we're doing these YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I know I have good information. Mm -hmm. So it's this internal wrestle of like, man, I know I have good information. I know I have value but I don't like being on camera and let's just keep it a hundred percent right now, Dustin, at the end of the day, it is that fear of what others think. Mm -hmm. We just call it different. And any, in it, yeah, you can doll it up as, <laughs> as much as you'd like. And some people are better at it than others. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the more you care for people in a healthy way, you're going to have more of a struggle to care in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is because I care for people so much, Dustin, I just naturally care for people. My struggle is always caring what people think in the wrong way. I'll care too much and let it carry over into like, oh, I know, but what if I... So the way I combat that is for one, I do it anyways. Mm -hmm. One thing I love to say is, is do it afraid. You see, being courageous, because, you know, when we think courageous, we're like, oh, that, that's like a Navy SEAL or <laughs> a police officer. It's like, no, man, being courageous is you showing up and doing something that's scaring you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as men... God forbid we say something scares us, right? Especially a little old camera, <laughs> right? <laughs> a little camera in your face, you know, it's, or, or whatever it would be, but you strip it all back. It's, it's fear. And being courageous is not, not having fear. It's doing it in spite of your fear. Mm -hmm. That's courageous. So as I started to realize like, dude, everybody gets scared. Mm -hmm. see i used to think like man they must not get scared dustin like they must they must just be me and as soon as i turn on myself and think it's just me i'm the only one that's insecure like this i'm the only one you just self-implode right and you'll never do it you'll never step out and there's so many people listening that have such incredible giftings they're just scared and then they look at somebody that's doing it. And the only difference is that guy's being courageous. He's just doing it scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard an interview by an actor. Um, I think it was Johnny Depp. And he said he had never watched any of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Because he wow. doesn't like to he doesn't like to watch yeah. himself. That makes sense. And I thought, and I thought, 
That's crazy, dude. One of the probably most talented, gifted actors. Are we on the same page with that? Oh, I yeah, mean, I that guy can be, yeah. he can be anything. Mm -hmm. He can't even watch himself. <laughs> and so I think the more we, it's, it's like that cliche, me too. You know, the more we have that, like, dude, that guy has the same struggle. Mm -hmm. The more we tap into that and, and, pull strength from the people that just step out and do it anyways and understand that it's not just you mm -hmm. um you literally start to rewire your brain not to just get all crazy but it's like you really start to rewire rewire your thoughts and that fear starts to diminish the more you because you're developing like this mental muscle of showing up mm-hmm you know, so I think people listening, you understand a lot of people that you watch that look like they're good at something on a screen. It takes a lot of work to get there and it takes a lot of work to stay there. It's, it's not natural, mm -hmm. you know, so that's definitely, you know, something that I continually have to work on. I relate with that so hard because I actually like created this channel probably a year and a half before I even did my first video or did the first episode, it was just like, oh, I'm going to start it. But like every time I would turn on the camera and it's literally just like, I would try for two hours, three hours. And I just could not get, it, it was literally like the fear of whether like I would rewatch and it was like, you, you cringe at your own video. So I just wouldn't upload it. And like, I think before we got on camera today, it was like, you know, you just, you almost just have to let it just post it. And, and sure. Not all hundred people would, relate with it or you know you may get only 10 but at least 10 people are listening and maybe 10 people get something from it that, but the other you know 90 didn't as long as you know somebody's reached off of the 10 or as long as somebody is in your corner that you can relate with that's all that really matters well and then you know what you need you know what successful people need to do they need to see people just starting out like you and be like i'll be on your show mm -hmm. like, dustin when you hit me up i didn't go look at how many followers you have and and mm -hmm. how many people watch your show? Like, oh, I don't want to be on some show that's just, it's like, I just went with my gut, you know, like, yeah, I'll be on this guy's show. Because people that have a lot of success, it shouldn't create a divide from the guys that are starting out. It sh we, sh we need to stay connected. And that doesn't mean you can say yes to everything. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying. It just means that guys that are starting out need the guys that have massive success to still be relatable. Mm -hmm. and and still reach back and be like yeah dude i'll give you a hand or like whatever that hand looks like mm -hmm. you know instead of letting that success build your ego and then you have no impact and influence which is human beings man the true fulfillment comes when you have impact and influence and you're leaving a legacy with your success that's what's going to be talked about at the grave absolutely straight that's, up that's that's like that my wife was me and my wife were talking about like you know we have you know you have family members you have dads you have moms whatever the case is like you know we we're talking about an in particular family member with her and like you know um and how he or she I won't even go like in depth of you know but how he or she just kind of abandons like their their kids or whatever and this is way off topic but like um we were think we were talking i was like man like how could somebody do that like how could somebody um you know think like that because then like when you're 50 60 70 years old like can you imagine the amount of regret like can you imagine the amount of like when let's say you get diagnosed with something and this is so deep but it's you get diagnosed with something it's like man I feel like what you would do is you would go back and you would think about what I, every, uh, those crazy bad things that you did. It's like, what are people going to remember you by? Like, you know, it's like, so I don't know. I, I truly related with that, even though that's way off topic. Just no, 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 you're on the right track because I think, I think there's a, there's a, there's a flavor out there right now, or I could even call it a climate with the culture that, people are realizing that staying connected and focusing on what's really important is, is getting really popular again, especially after COVID. 
where before that, like it was a lot of like push, push, push long hours, all night, no sleep. Let's go. Like, let's be successful. And, and we all kind of sat back and, and really thought about our why again and what, what we're doing and who we're doing it for. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause it rattled the current climate out there is rattling everybody, you know, and I see this reset of people are, you know, self-care is getting really popular again, right? People are talking about like taking care of yourself and creating margin for your life, not just working all the time or thinking about work or being, you know, being consumed with it, like intentionally creating margin for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's just a Sunday or whether it's a Saturday or Sunday, but people are getting a lot more intentional because they're feeling vulnerable because of the what's going on everywhere. And I think people are starting to realize like, man, at the end of the day, the only thing that you can control is, is yourself. So we need to get real intentional about self-control mm -hmm. and massive. investing in ourselves. It goes back to like, if you're, if you're not healthy, your goals won't be healthy. Your business won't be healthy. Your relationship won't be healthy. It literally just ultimately comes back down to you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I literally will see people every once in a while still talking shit on social media and being that guy. I, I, I can't even hardly get my head around it. I'm like, I can't even believe, I mean, I understand the beginning. It was kind of a thing like, Oh, look, we're all, on the playground together let's like fight and like bully each other yeah. and it's like we're s <laughs> you guys are still doing that yeah you're still utilizing this platform for that mm -hmm. that's sad it is man it is that's it's, sad it's like one of the greatest one of the greatest tools mm -hmm. ever is social media it's a double-edged sword though yeah. greatest tool ever you know and i think what some of these guys don't realize is that um being that we're talking about self-care and investing in yourself like some of these guys that are older that are super talented they have no idea the negative impact they're having on some of these other guys they have no idea that i mean two years ago i got a shadow box hanging up in our break room in here is, is justin greenroyd he committed suicide you know, we're all running around, you know, on the playground, bullying each other. And we have no idea how screwed up some dudes are. And you could be that one that's pushing them over the edge. I think it's disgusting, to be yes, honest with you. It's, it's awful. I think it's, it's absolutely bad. disgusting. I think it's a disgrace, to be honest. It is, man. You have no idea, like, what they could have got four more comments before that one and you just are that one and it's like who who wants to be responsible for you know making someone even if it's not even if it doesn't push that person to commit suicide but even if it just makes them feel bad like what what in you wants to utilize your time to comment that and like you know you can't see the reaction you can't like what what just what gives you that enjoyment you know it's like those people should be banned if there was a way in the algorithm to just yeah ban everybody based on their intentions but i know i kind of got to protect myself when i even start talking about that i have a strong sense of justice i get a little dark side rises <laughs> up i want to destroy these people that do that <laughs> but you know what when you look at it it's like they're just destroying themselves and they have a very small audience, you know, they got their little fan club that, mm -hmm. you know, laughs at all their jokes at other people's expense. And, uh, one of your questions just to tie into that, you know, you asked what was one of my biggest challenges. Well, one of my biggest challenges in starting shine supply was that just being discredited, you know, all over the place. Like, what is this shit? I mean, literally those words, like, what is it? Like, you know, not knowing I already had, you know, 18 something years in the industry and uh, I was already an authorized trainer from McGuire's and I was a distributor for, I had so much backstory that I didn't talk about and I got jabbed at. Um, it was so hard to hold my tongue. Cause I'm not like that in person. You know, if you came up and smarted off, like I'm not one to just, Oh, you know, like I'm not going to cower down. I'm going to speak to mm -hmm. whatever you're coming at me with, but online I knew it was a losing battle. 
and I had to just hold my fingers. <laughs> it's not my mm -hmm. tongue, right? I I just I knew who I was, even though there was days it it sucked. <laughs> The things, you know, some people would say, I'm just like, but you know what? I'd already, that wasn't my first rodeo. You know I mean? My wife's mom clowned me when we got married because I was a car washer. Mm -hmm. She's tell my wife, like, what's he going to do? Mm -hmm. Like, she's like this mom, this is his business. I know, but what's he going to like do for a living? You mm -hmm. know, that those comments hers like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is what I'm doing. You know, now, obviously, she has a little different take now on that. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> you know, the reason my success didn't make me arrogant, because in those moments, I didn't make it about, oh, I'm going to show them. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, if you knew how hard it was for me just to show up for myself every day, how mm -hmm. discouraged I get, you would never be saying that to me. Right, Dustin? It's like... Mm -hmm. If they knew the demons I was battling, even mentally, it's like you would never be saying that. You'd be the first person to encourage me because I'm already in my head, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But like yeah. you said, I didn't have a plan B. It's like, so the hardest thing, especially starting Shine Sweat, was just the people. People love to discredit. Some people just love to discredit, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull you down because for some reason it makes them feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then other people discredit because they think, well, why should you be getting somewhere that I haven't been getting and I've been trying longer and harder than you? Mm -hmm. So they think they have been, right? Um, but that that was tough, man. Like it got so tough. I finally just deleted Facebook. I was like, I ain't, I'm not even coming to your guys' playground no more. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's not be, trust me, it's not because I was afraid of it. It was just because I knew it was distracting me. I was like, man, this is pulling me down. I got to change up my energy. So I was like, I'm just going to get off Facebook and focus on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Cause Facebook, I don't know how it is now, but man, it was like a fest pool for that. Those little detailing groups, mm -hmm. it was so toxic. I couldn't even believe it. They're still like that. <laughs> yeah, it's just pathetic. Like I'm literally embarrassed for people when I then when I see what they ride, I'm like, you're you're just a fool, man. Yeah. And like there you I'm a firm believer. You can call it karma. I like to call it you reap what you sow. I'm like, man, dude, you are <laughs> you're gonna have a harvest that you ain't gonna want. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Even if it's when you lay your head down at night and you can't sleep because you run around and treat people like shit all day. Mm -hmm. Like it is going to eat your soul up. And every single person out there doing it, I know it eats them up. Whether they realize it or not, they are miserable people. Mm -hmm. And all they do is express their own personal misery, misery on everybody else. So that was my biggest challenge. But I just said, I'm out. You guys can play in the sandbox, you know. Mm -hmm. and talk about how your toys are better like i'm out i'm gonna go over here and build something comes to down yeah. to that double-edged sword that's it what was like. and that's when i got i was already on instagram but that's when i got on the instagram stories and i'm like dude this is my lane i just went mm -hmm. crazy with the stories it's i like instagram better i think it's a better platform i think like and i don't I'm not, i don't even know how it it goes to this, but like, you know how like TikTok, you know, how like Instagram, Facebook, there's like different people that hang out. Like you said, like at those playgrounds, Facebook has different people. Instagram has different people. I just feel like Instagram has been better for me as well. When it comes to um, the type of people, even when it comes to like clients, I feel like the type of people are just better on Instagram. I think like, e like for, in for detailing, even, you know, it's almost like a gallery for people to post pictures of their cars. I think it's way easier to find clients even on Instagram because you can just go to their profile. You can see, Oh, they live in your area. Oh, they have a car. They take pride in that car. That's a perfect person to engage with. You know, it's a lot harder on Facebook and I don't know how Facebook really works that in depth just cause I don't, it's, it's not the platform I go hundred percent at, um, yeah. but it's just crazy how each platform has different types of people. No, I agree. And just to bring that around, because I know I was kind of venting, but the, the point being is that you need to find what your lane is. 
and stay in your lane, mm -hmm. you know, and run your lane. Because last time I checked, we're all in business because we want to be successful. We want to make it. So the way you make it is you, you eliminate negative energy. And I don't mean like if you have a friend you're struggling with, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about eliminating negative energy and things that have no bearing on your life or your future. Mm -hmm. Cause I am not saying I'm not getting on board with this new, these new quotes that are out there. Like if it's not serving me, mm -hmm. I'm cutting it off. It's like, dude, sometimes my friends don't serve me, mm -hmm. but I know I'm called to actually influence them and help pull them out of the mental trench they're in. And if I just cut them off, who's going to show up for them. Mm hmm right now obviously there's some wisdom in that if it goes on and on and they start pulling you down yeah you gotta you gotta step back and evaluate but i don't mean just cutting people off i mean cutting off the sources in your life that are just draining your energy on people again that have no bearing whatsoever on your future none they're loud but they're not potent Mm -hmm. at all it's just noise <laughs> yeah it's the yeah. Va value won't always be 50 50 or you know um you know i think that's what we always want we want like when it comes to friends or we come to, when it comes to people in our life we think like and it, i think it comes down to entitlement like you you think they should give me the same 50% I'm giving them this year, you know, and every year it should be like that. Everybody goes through different stages. That person may need you to help them that year when it comes to, you know, providing them with motivation or inspiration, you know, next year it may be them helping you. And I think that's where we, we get mixed up with like, who's in our corner. And that, that quote, I don't really vibe with it either because, you know, there's been, everybody's in different stages of life. Like if you help that person, the next year you may need that same value that you help them with, you know, because we all go through ups and downs and, you know, their, their year may be next year and they can help you. Yeah. People need to learn how to deposit, not just withdraw. Mm -hmm. We want to withdraw from it. Hey, well, how are you serving me? How are you helping me? It's like, no, man, a, a healthy bank account is a de deposits and withdraw. It's a balance. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at relationships. Like you got to know, when am I called to just deposit into this relationship because they don't really have anything for me right now? And then you're right, Dustin, it'll end up coming back around. And if it doesn't, that's when you know you need to reevaluate and maybe it is time to move on. Mm -hmm. But we're just so quick to cut everybody off and then people sit back and it's like, dude, the top's only lonely because you didn't take anybody with you. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, you want to take people with you. And that's how leaders think. And if guys are listening that are business owners, like you're a leader, whether you realize it or not, you're a leader, you are having impact, you know, and we need to take that serious for your own good. I think that's what guys need to realize. Dude, this is for your own good. This is for your own fulfillment. You know, sometimes we're not really thinking about what really fulfills us. We're just in the moment, right? What feels good right now? Oh, to react. No, sometimes I need to step back, not say anything. <laughs> right? I love a scripture in the Bible that says, even a fool is considered wise if he remains silent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? That is, dude. That <laughs> is. That's that's something my wife and I have been, I guess that's one of the things, you know, going first, I'll go first type thing, but um, get back in church. Like we we've really been like, uh, trying to do like a daily devotional and um, kind of like, you know, trying to get into that. So it's kind of refreshing you, you saying that I didn't know which way, if you, I don't want to really get into religion if you were not, but. Oh, well, just to make clear, I'm anti-religion, you know, but I have a strong relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, and, and, and my relationship with God is literally my anchor. Mm -hmm. I'd be a shipwrecked human being. And I got no shame in saying it, you know, he's my stretcher, you know, that's awesome. people yeah. say, Oh, that's your crutch. No, it's actually my stretcher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the Lord has carried me through life. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I have partnered with them. It's like a plane. There's two wings. My faith is one wing. My, my application and how I've applied myself is the other wing, mm -hmm. you know, 
it's like, yeah, I've shown up and done the work, but you know, I really accredit all my success to active faith. I ain't talking about going to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not talking about checking a box, reading your little Bible. I'm talking about like an active, active faith. So I'm not trying to get all preachy with everybody, but <laughs> a active faith has, has been my lifeline, mm -hmm. you know? There's so much wisdom in that, you know, mm -hmm. and we need that, Dustin. You know, we need that wisdom. A lot of times we don't know what to do, mm -hmm. you know, so we get our phone out. Oh, well, what are they doing? It's like, no, sometimes we need to sit with ourselves and, and know that you can pray. <laughs> Ask God for wisdom. I don't care what you believe. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I don't go to true. Oh, I don't do this. It's like, you know what, man, there's no, there's no barrier. You can ask God for wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and it says that he'll give it to you freely. You know, so I would encourage guys to do that, man. Ask for wisdom. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. There's a lot of, there's, there's more times I don't know what to do than I know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I ask God for wisdom, you know, and I read books, even though I don't particularly like to read to like learn and educate myself and, you know, mm -hmm. so good stuff man yeah <laughs> we'll we'll end it on that one but man <laughs> good stuff yeah dude i freaking appreciate you coming on man this has probably been the most like to to say to touch on literally between not necessarily strategy but like to touch on just literally cuz there's really no strategy like it's like you were saying man it's not there's no I mean, there is, I guess you, when you get into like, you could get in the nitty gritty of ads and social media, but like those things, those are kind of like, it works once, but you got to keep repeating those. But like, we hit on everything from like core values, things that like, will you know, truly, you know, keep you busy forever. Um, all the way down to just, I mean, even things that you were saying, man, there's like hit me you know on things that i need to either work on or things that i'm looking at was like you know that actually solves my problem you know so i appreciate you all together dude you've been a freaking inspiration since you know i remember starting my business and you know looking up to you and and how you ran sean supply or you know how you brand yourself even you know there's so many things i would look at you you know for guidance kind of thing thanks man i really appreciate that dustin yeah, absolutely, dude. I do. I hold that kind of stuff close. Yeah. I can tell you're a genuine person. You know, I can feel that when you talk. And so that means a lot. I want to leave everybody with something. Um, our company slogan is work hard, stay passionate, as a lot of people know. Being in business for 26 years, there's obviously been long seasons where I have not been passionate. The flow of business and life has worn me down like to the core, like to where I want to quit. It's those seasons. You just keep working hard. So when you don't have the passion, you just keep working hard and it'll come back. That's what makes the difference. When the passion's gone because of the tough seasons, you don't stop because you don't feel it. You stay committed. You keep working hard on all the right things and the passion will come back. So it's, it's that old quote. If you've lost your passion, do what you used to do. <laughs> so whatever you've gotten away from, go back and do that thing. You know, Get your heart beating again, so to speak. And a lot of times you'll see that just like a ship has a rudder, it, it turns your rudder of your business and you'll start going back in the right direction. So that's, I want to leave everybody with that. Work hard, stay passionate. If you've lost your passion, get back to work. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was one that we just really vibed out. We went deep on, you know, you know, not just how to run your business and how to market and how to brand, but really just 
you know, how it goes even deeper than that sometimes, how you need to work on yourself sometimes, how you need to go first, as Jeremy said, and uh, be the leader that, you know, some people are looking to you to be. So it, it just goes deeper and, and, and there's no get rich quick scheme out there. There's no way to, you know, the next day get your business to where you you vision and where you dream it dreamed it would be. Uh, it goes deeper than that. And he, he tells you a sustainable path to, to long term success for your detailing business, the things that you know, it really takes the core values to running a business. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I know I did. I left this episode. I, I got off the, I got off our episode and, you know, I, I started taking more action after that. And, and, you know, it kind of put a, a lot more spark or a, a little bit more fire to my, um, my every day after, after talking with him, just because of how inspirational he is, how motivational he is. And I uh, just really enjoyed this episode a lot to me. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you are enjoying the content from this channel or, or you did enjoy this episode, uh, if you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, it's going to greatly help the channel grow so that we can reach other detailers as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did personally, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next episode of the Detail Spot Podcast.